YouTube. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video with your boy T Ron. Guys, today we got how good was Shannon Sharp actually? Now he got that podcast now. Him and Ocho are funny as I don't know what, y'all. They are hilarious together. That's the best thing he ever done. He need to keep that thing going. But let's get straight into the video. Let's see some history. Let's see some facts. Yeah, y'all. Grab a snack. Grab some popcorn. Sit back and enjoy. Let's go. All right. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. For all you youngsters who think Shannon Sharp is just a media personality, no oh boy, oh, sir. are you wrong? Well, Unlike tough. his talk show counterparts, Unk could ball. Not only is he a Hall of Famer yeah. with three Super Bowl rings, but he revolutionized the tight end position and forever changed the way an NFL offense operates. As one of the biggest personalities in NFL history, <laughs> Shannon loved to talk on and off the field, but he always backed it up. So how good was he actually? And where does he rank among the greatest tight ends of all time? Up there. Sharp was born into a poor family in Glenville, Georgia. His parents split when he was just three months old, immediately giving him adversity to overcome. Basic needs were not guaranteed. <laughs> just three months old, immediately. <laughs> My bad, y'all. I'm childish, bro. But come on, come on. My bad pictures look no better. Yeah. <laughs> him adversity to overcome. Basic needs were not guaranteed in the rural South, and neither was his family's safety. In fact, during his Hall of Fame speech, Sharp explained that we were so poor, a robber once broke into our house, and we ended up robbing the robber. To make matters worse, Sharp's father passed away from cancer when he was in his early teens, leaving him without a father figure for a large part of his youth. Luckily for Shannon and his siblings, his grandmother, Mary Porter, stepped in to raise them. Porter also helped take care of several other- Shout out to g -Maz, man. If you got your g -Maz still with you man love her call to talk to her, man i know he like to talk a lot you know gma's always like to talk a lot he be on the phone like this but hey those moments you always remember man remember extended family members see my grandmother and grandfather they raised me and i hung on everything they say but they didn't know it so everyone lived packed into one small home barely fit for a family of four you know there's no paneling in the house there's no insulation in the house it was basically cinder block it was really really cold in the winter but mm. while the sharp family didn't have much what shannon and his older brother sterling did have was sports that was going to be their way out at glenville high school sterling was a superstar athlete playing basketball football and running track he became a high profile football recruit that took his talents to the university of south carolina south shannon carolina. had hoped to follow in his brother's footsteps and as an athlete he did he was also a star multi-sport athlete but in the classroom, he struggled, so his mm. only offer came from the local Division II school, Savannah State. Sharp would continue to play multiple sports at Savannah, playing basketball, competing in track and field events, and... He played basketball, track, and football in college? Now, that's different, bro. That is different. If y'all ever played college ball, I played college ball. That is outrageous, but the conditioning you gotta be in up for the Tigers football team. But it was quickly obvious that the gridiron was where Sharp was at his best. Shannon set many records while at Savannah State, totaling a whopping 192 receptions for 3,744 mm. receiving yards and 40 touchdowns over four years. And while Shannon was dominating the inferior D2 <laughs> competition, his brother Sterling was doing the same at USC, then in the NFL. At South Carolina, Sterling set nearly every receiving record, which led to him being drafted seventh overall by the Green Bay Packers in 1988. Then, Brothers. by just his second year in the NFL, he was already a first-team All-Pro. But despite his brother's instant success, nobody was paying close attention to Shannon. I'm the best, Carly. I'm better than you are. You know it. The NFL was <laughs> far different 30-plus years That's ago. That's what I think Shannon gonna do, but he gonna talk. If he'll do nothing else, he gonna talk. Tight ends were expected to be closer physically to offensive tackles than wide receivers. While Sterling was the ideal NFL wide receiver, Shannon was just a tweener with good stats. The future NFL legend was written off and seen as a project rather than a weapon. Little did they know, Shannon would go on to change more the course of the tight end position forever. Cause Way more than a project. They had it all messed Let's up. Pro. I need to go upstairs. Because after a grueling six rounds undrafted in the 1990 NFL draft, that round one was off the table, but I, I thought I was good enough to be a second or third round draft pick. The Denver Broncos took a shot on the undersized tight end. And I pick up the phone and it was the Broncos. 
I just said we selected you in the seventh round. But like other teams' evaluations of Sharp, Dang, they didn't believe round. he was a tight end. Instead, they committed to playing him as a wide receiver. Denver failed. Over 1990 and 1991, Sharp's first two NFL seasons, he totaled just 29 receptions for 421 receiving yards. Legendary QB John Elway was leading the offense, but Sharp struggled to make an impact. And to make things worse, this was all happening while Shannon lived in the shadow of his brother Sterling. While Shannon was trying to get his footing in the NFL, Sterling continued racking up all pro Dang, and pro. Super, I didn't know all this, y'all. This is interesting to me. I didn't know all this. I thought he came into the league code. Crazy. for the Green Bay Packers. So Shannon struggling to make an impact only created a sense that one brother was meant for NFL greatness and the other was simply a role player. In 1992, Sharp finally broke through expectations and never looked back. Broncos head coach Dan Reeves decided to play Sharp where he belonged, at tight end. And yeah. the results were immediate. Sharp exploded for 53 receptions and 640 receiving yards, mm -hmm. which led all tight ends in the league. The Turn Broncos had found something special. Of course, the other NFL teams had talented tight ends that were putting up numbers, but Denver had only scratched the surface of what Sharp could become. In the 1993 season, Sharp reached new heights again, and as his relationship with John Elway grew, so did his numbers. The Broncos' tight end had a whopping 81 receptions for Dang, 995 bro. yards and 9 touchdowns. 81 but receptions? Dang, bro, that's a lot of catches, bro. First time, Sharp was named First Team All-Pro. That's a special honor for any player, but it also <laughs> marked the first and only time that Shannon was named to the squad during the same year as his brother Sterling. Shannon was no longer living in his brother's shadow. Instead, they were shining together. Sadly, the Sharp brothers didn't get a chance to complete that feat again after Sterling suffered a career-ending neck injury that forced him into early retirement. Sterling's career was robbed from him after just seven NFL seasons. It was a gridiron trap tragedy that Sterling, who looked destined to be a Hall of Famer, could not keep playing in the NFL alongside Shannon. But I played football because my brother played, and man, it broke my heart when he said it was over. As heartbreaking as Sterling's injury was, Damn. it only added further motivation for Shannon. The Broncos' tight end was dedicated to representing the Sharp name, and he would eventually get the chance to honor his brother's playing career with the ultimate tribute. However, Sharp was still... See, bro, I love stuff like this, bro, because like, most people don't know this. I didn't know his brother got injured. I didn't know his brother was better than him when they came into the league. But no, this is dope, man. This is dope. Listen, pursuing his ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl title. By 1995, the Broncos had built a team that could match up with anyone offensively, and it was time to take advantage of that. But it didn't come easy. The Broncos struggled in the 95 season under new head coach Mike Shanahan, failing to make the playoffs at 8-8. Eight eight. Frustratingly for Sharp, the Denver defense let them down on several occasions, while the offense finished third in the NFL in total yards. Even worse, Sharp missed significant time due to an injury for the first time in his career. Career. The Broncos' tight end only started 12 games, but still scored four touchdowns and totaled 756 Jeez, receiving yards, crazy. the second most of any NFL tight end that season. Performing at that level while injured only injured. further proved Sharp's injured, talent and yo. toughness. Injured. <sighs> was rewarded for playing through injury as he was named to the Pro Bowl for the third consecutive year. In 96, the Broncos began to realize their potential, and in his second year as head coach, Shanahan leaned on Sharp as the Broncos started the campaign with an astonishing 12-1 record. They went on to outscore opponents 391-275 to hey! that season, finishing the year 13-3 with Sharp That's being crazy. the key reason for their offensive success. In 15 games, Sharp brought down 80 receptions for 1,062 yards. Oh, bro was different, y'all. Bro was different. Y'all better put some respect on Shan name. He just, he just ain't no broadcaster now. He used to really do this. Come on now, y'all. Y'all better get hip. Career high 10 touchdowns, and as he was torching opponent defenses, he would let them know about it. The New yeah. England Patriots <laughs> found that out the hard way. In the middle of a dominant 34 to 8 win, Sharp pulled out a red telephone on the <laughs> sideline and video. infamously shouted, "President, we need a national guard. We need as many men as you can spare. Cause we are killing the Patriots." <laughs> Unfortunately, trash talking can come back to haunt you, and for Sharp that season, it did. While the Patriots would go on to play in the Super Bowl, Denver suffered a shocking 30 to 27 upset to the Jacksonville. Jaguars mm. in their first playoff game. Sharp and the Broncos were back to square one. Over that 96 season, they had become the team to beat in the NFL, and getting beat in the first round of the playoffs wasn't part of the script. Considering that John Elway was now 37, time was running out. 
But after being humbled, the Broncos had a chip on their shoulder entering the 97 season. Denver won their opening six games, with Sharp bringing down 18 receptions for 266 yards and a touchdown. Not a bad start, but the best was yet to come for the Broncos' tight end. Over the next 10 games, Sharp crossed the 80-yard mark five times. While he only reached the end zone three times in that regular season, his 1,107 receiving yards was truly incredible. In fact, no other tight end that season even came close to matching him. Sharp beat the next closest competitor by 320 yards. In terms of pure impact, his 15.3 yards per catch that season was vital to the Broncos' success. But Sharp's goal wasn't to lead the NFL in various stats, it was to hoist the Lombardi Trophy. To do that, they would need to exercise the demons of the 96 season by beating the Jags in another postseason opener. And they did more than just beat them. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got quiet, but I'm really locked into this, but I did not know all this. Like, I swear, I'm like locked in. That's why I haven't been saying much to you guys. Hope you guys are watching it with me, but this is crazy, man. Dominated Jacksonville in their outrageous. postseason rematch, winning 42 to 17. Then, in the AFC Championship game, they played against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sharp made multiple key receptions down the stretch in a yeah. close 24-21 win. Finally, after eight seasons, Sharp was playing for a ring. Years and years of struggle, success, and falling just short had culminated in the Super Bowl 32 bout against the Green Bay Packers. The Packers were the defending champs and the favorite, but the Broncos got hot early, jumping out to a 17-7 lead. Sharp. Yeah, this is getting good. I hope they won. I don't think they did, though, the way he's saying it. We're going to see. That's outrageous. Yeah. Man, I don't know, like that. Sharp didn't get in the end zone, but Elway always looked to him as his security blanket, targeting Sharp a team high five times. In a Super Bowl classic, Denver and Green Bay traded blows before the game was tied at 24 all in the fourth quarter. That tie was broken with little time remaining as Terrell Davis reached the end zone for the Broncos at the 145 mark in the fourth quarter. Denver's defense held up on the following drive, and the yes, Lombardi sir. Trophy swapped hands. Oh, they won! Let's go! Yes, sir! Broncos. The narratives around John Elway both. finally reaching the top of the mountain dominated the national media. But Sharp's journey deserved just as much press. Man. His seventh round pick out of Savannah State was now a Super Bowl champion. And Sharp would finally get to honor the cut short career of his brother Sterling. Shannon gifted his Super Bowl ring to Sterling. And we're doing an interview with NBC and we're sitting down talking. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to give him the Super Bowl ring. Some things are bigger That's than tough. personal success. Tough, and the man. Sharp brothers clearly understand that. But what do you do after you accomplish your ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl? You do it again, and you do it in even more dominant fashion. After an impressive 12-4 regular season campaign in their first Super Bowl season, the Broncos followed that up with a 14-2 run in 1998. 14-2, y'all? Nah, bro, they were different. Dismantled their opponents, initially starting on a 13-0 streak to open the season. So much for the Super Bowl slump, huh? The stats were wild. Sharp and the Broncos scored 31.3 points per game, establishing themselves as one of the most dynamic offenses in NFL history. Outrageous. In 18 total games played, Denver won 15 games by two scores or more, including all three of their playoff games. Sharp didn't cross the 1,000-yard receiving mark, but he did reach 10 touchdowns for the second time in his career. For a third consecutive year, Sharp was named a first-team All-Pro and a Pro Bowler. It was a storybook ending for Elway, who retired at the end of the season. Yeah, I just can't compete should. at the level in this game that I want to compete at anymore. For Sharp, that was a huge deal. The only quarterback he had ever really known in the NFL was gone. And now the Broncos mm. had to start again with someone new. And unfortunately for Sharp, it just didn't pan out. He had multiple injuries in 1999, limiting him to just five total appearances. By the following Dang, off... I was born in 99. Damn. Unk old. Mmm. 2000, the four-time All-Pro was a free agent, and he was going to take his talents elsewhere. After 10 seasons in Denver, Sharp joined a talented Baltimore Ravens team for the 2000 season. The Ravens boasted two legendary running backs in Jamal Lewis and Priest Holmes, but sorely lacked a downfield threat. So that's where Sharp came in. Baltimore prided itself on its defense, but Sharp took them to a new level on offense, and the numbers prove it. The veteran tight end led the entire squad in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns, with 800 
110 That's yards tough, and five bro. scores. The Ravens went. Now he had from a crazy career, guys. Now that they went back all the way to the beginning, he had a crazy career. Eight bro. and eight team in 1999 to a powerhouse that finished 12 and four in 2000. Somehow that record didn't win the AFC Central due to the Tennessee Titans going 13 and three. Hey, Sharp Tennessee, and the Ravens man. would have the last laugh. To open the postseason, Baltimore dismantled Sharp's former team. The Ravens beat the Broncos 21 to three as Sharp exploded for three catches, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Now, Sharp and Baltimore got their shot at the Titans in the divisional round. After a fairly close game to start, the Ravens broke the contest open in the fourth quarter to win 24-10. That's about like us, the Titans, man. We can't never bring it all together. We'll get there and then we'll just throw it away. That's just how we always been. Sharp only made one catch, but it was a monstrous 53-yard grab that was a huge momentum shifter for Baltimore. Hey, and that huge catch against the Titans was a foreshadowing of the AFC Championship clash with the Oakland Raiders. In a 16-3 victory, Sharp made the most famous play of his career. First, catching a pass at the Ravens' 12-yard line, Sharp ran all the way down the field for a 96-yard touchdown. It was the only touchdown in Baltimore's victory and the longest score of Sharp's career. After three exceptional games, Sharp had once again reached the Super Bowl. Sharp made just one catch for five yards in the big game, but Baltimore defeated the New York Giants 34-7 for the team's first ever Super That's Bowl victory. Crazy, Sharp would spend one more season with the Ravens, going for 811 receiving yards and two touchdowns in 2001. He was named to his final Pro Bowl. Yeah, you better quit playing with him, bro. He's certified season, marking his eighth appearance. The Ravens would not replicate their previous postseason success, losing in the divisional round. And as painful as it is to say this, they have a better football team than what we got. But Sharp had made his mark in Charm City oh, and sure. had a Super Bowl ring to sure. show for it. To wrap up his career, him. Shannon returned to Denver. To no one's surprise, he was still a massive problem for opposing defenses. Over 28 games in his final two years, Sharp racked up 1,456 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns. Shh. Tight ends today are some of the most game-breaking weapons in the NFL, combining speed and size to create the ultimate mismatch. They have Shannon Sharp to thank for that, being Man. arguably the most influential player to ever play that position. To this day, Sharp is still top five among tight ends in receptions and receptions. Receiving yards. Hey, hey, hey. He is, without a doubt, a top five tight end in NFL history. His legacy was cemented in 2011 when he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. His presence on television and social media has made Sharp more famous than ever. Yeah. Even people who don't watch football know who he is, thanks to memes and clips He's of Sharp hilarious. doing his thing. But it's important to remember why he was put on TV in the first place. It's because he always has had the game to go along with the gab. For more of the best NFL content. Hey guys, to our nation, bro. What you guys think about that video, bro? I'm gonna put some respect on Shannon Short name. He's been like that, bro. But he's more than just a broadcaster, guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed this at all. I didn't know some of this stuff that they said in the video, but I'm gonna cut the video off there. Like I always said in my videos, to our nation. Stay you, man. Always, always, always stay you, and I love you. Peace.